Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. In today's video, we're gonna look at three cornfields and give you the update. And on this first one, this is the hybrid, the yellow and white cross that we did, trucker's favorite and yellow Guatemala. This is the second year of planting the seed that we created. So it's gonna be interesting to see what we get. But however, there is two things about this field. The majority of this field was fertilized with crimson clover. Right here on this side, which is doing the best, was fertilized with the actual silage piles themselves from last year. The juice comes out of the silage piles, and of course you have the waste from what goes bad on top. All this old stuff here, that's fertilized for the cornfield next year. I just throw it out here. It really helps the ground. And I'm telling you what, it fertilizes the ground like I've never seen. The corn does really good. Right here is where we buried the fish. This first row, about the first 30 foot. Literally can't see a difference. Now, it may be a little early in the game. We'll, we'll check back in with you. But as of right now, not a lot of difference between that row and the other rows around it. But time will tell. Now, as you can tell, this corn is just getting started good. Do you want to know how tall it is? I don't have a tape measure, but I can show you. I'm six foot and two inches. It's over my head and it's just getting started. So I am excited because last year we had some that hit 15 foot and three inches. What are we gonna do this year? I don't know. We haven't touched it with a bit of fertilizer. Last year we had to, this year we don't. What's my secret you may ask? Crimson clover all the way. You might remember last year I had two silage piles, one under a tarp and one under a living tarp, a grass tarp. The tarp was here, the grass tarp was down there. This corn right here is by far the best corn I've got on the property, period, hands down. Unbelievable what that did. So I've got some short, short rows on the other end down there, and I'm going to put the silage pile there next year. You can clearly see the corn comes down, stair stepping down. So I am going to put the silage pile right here next year. I don't know if we'll have one or two piles, whatever the case may be for sure right here. This is a poor area. We're gonna build it up. It's unbelievable. We have knee high corn and we have corn that's way over my head right here. So that's that field, let's head on over and check the other We're over here at the other side of the property. This is the field. This is one of the fields I'm very excited about. This is the field where we did three clover experiments. We did Bursim, we did Red, and we did Crimson. If you were here with us last year, you realize the Bursim didn't make it through the winter. It died out at the first frost. So we decided that Bursim is out for us for a winter crop. I came back in here in January and planted crimson clover right there and it came up good and by the time I plowed it in, it was this tall. There was a lot of grass in it, but it was still there. That corn is doing amazing. Next to it, we had the red clover. The red clover did not grow hardly any foliage. It stayed short. Even when it came time to plow it in May, still short. So what do you guess? The corn is short. That's just all there is to it. And on the other end down here was the crimson clover. And we've got a great looking stand over there. I'll take you down that way right now. Needless to say, I am in love with crimson clover. I want you to look here. Over my head already, barely getting started, already over six foot tall. Now that's something because last year we grew corn in this same field. And if you know anything about corn, it is a heavy nitrogen feeder. You never plant corn in the same year place twice without having planted a crop in between to give it some nitrogen. Most people do soybeans one year, corn the next. Soybeans one year, corn the next. Sometimes they do soybeans two years. And to be honest, they still have to use chemical fertilizer. That's the part that kills me. This here, we grew corn here last year, no chemical fertilizer. We are growing corn here this year, no chemical fertilizer. If that don't blow your mind, you just don't understand corn. This stuff takes a lot, and I mean a lot of nitrogen, and it is growing like you put triple 20 on it 
right now. Now what I will say about this corn that's growing where the red clover was, it's still got good color. Even though it's shorter, the color's there. And that matters to me a lot. If the color's off, yellow, red, streaks running through it and all kinds of stuff, you got to put some fertilizer on it. This here, even though it's shorter, it's still got the color. It's still gonna make a crop. It may not be near the biomass, but it's still gonna make a crop. And you can bet your bottom dollar, there'll be crimson clover in here next fall. And this won't be this tall. It'll be this tall at this time next year. I don't even have to tell you how excited I am about this field. You can tell by looking. This makes me very happy. I've sort of got this whole thing situated to where every one of my fields is exciting to me right now. But this one here is exciting for two reasons. Eric Hale gave me this corn seed and it is a three-way hybrid with purple pride, which is a blue corn. It's got the yellow Guatemala and the white trucker's favorite. It's got all three. So this right here is gonna be a crop that I'm extremely excited to pick this fall. But also, if you remember the last video on this field, this is the soybean field. We had trouble with this field last year with fertilizer. We had to fertilize it with chemical fertilizer because when my corn got so tall, it became very evident if I want a crop, I'm gonna have to go shell out the moolah and put on the fertilizer. Well, as you see, we don't need to fertilize it this year because the crimson clover done its job. But Farm All Fanatic had give me a pretty good little challenge that I need to plant soybeans out here in this field. I did. And I give him a challenge in return. You need to plant crimson clover in your field. I want to see the difference that it makes. Crimson clover is not a very good summertime cover crop. So if I want to double crop a nitrogen product in this field, I'm going to have to go with a soybean. We laid it in heavy. As you can see, it's coming up good. It won't be very many days. We're going to have a total canopy. There's not going to be hardly any weeds come up through that. And that is beautiful. We planted it like hair on a dog's back and we have had really nice rain for the last couple of days and it's really popping up. I think it come out of the ground on day five. You've got day five, day six, day seven, day eight, day nine, day 10. It's just unbelievable how this stuff grows. And I want to show you this, this corn is no slouch either. This corn is right up there with the rest of them over my head. It is doing good. And that my friend makes me a happy, happy man. This side of my property is my hunting side of the property. We don't come over here much, but we raise this corn and the soybeans are going to help keep the deer here in the summertime. Deer don't really eat. They might eat corn where you're at. They really don't eat my corn. They leave it alone. Every once in a while, I'll see a top nipped, but that's it. The soybeans, I know they're gonna enjoy. They're gonna come in here and eat these. There's no clover here right now, other than just a patch here and a patch there. So in order to bring them in, this, these soybeans are really gonna do the trick. We've got a bow season that lasts a weekend in august and then at the end of september the regular bow season opens up and then from there on out it's deer season all the way to the first of january we have got it going on one thing we did that probably increased our germination rate by probably 75 percent was cultipacking that cultipacker you can see it, it looks like we planted it in rows we didn't plant it in rows i broadcast it that cultipacker packs that down in them strips it has it has blades on it that's about as thick as my finger and about as tall, probably two inches, inch and a half. And I mean, he packed the tar out of it. I told him, I don't care how many times you drive over it. He drove over it several times. And I'm telling you, it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. There won't be no weeds in this field much. Obviously, I can't go and cultivate anymore. I don't need to. Them soybeans are going to be there pushing that nitrogen into that soil. Needless to say, I'm very excited. I'm hoping when the soybeans get up so big, I'm gonna disc them down and put my crimson clover back in there. And next year, Lord have mercy, what kind of corn are we gonna grow? What kind of corn are we gonna grow? I don't know, but you hang around long enough and you'll see it. If we're still planting corn, if we're still, <laughs> if this world is still here, because let's face it, things are just slightly crazy. But 
if I'm alive and willing and able. There'll be corn here next year. But that's all we've got for you today. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you really will decide to plant crimson clover as a nitrogen builder in your soil because it will save you money in the long run and it'll make you free from the fertilized store. But that's all we've got for you. We're going to get on out of here. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.